March is the first month of tornado season and we saw our first intense tornadoes of the year. Today, I'm going to go over every tornado that happened in March 2024 along with photos of the tornadoes, radar scans of the tornadoes, and the damage that these tornadoes caused. So let's get straight into it. Our first section is from March 1st to March 12th. So as you can see, we didn't have that much tornadic activity. One in Ohio and a couple down here near Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. We're going to focus in on this F2 tornado that hit Georgia. This tornado tracked for 4.7 miles and it was 130 mile per hour winds inside of the tornado and this made it an EF2 tornado. This happened on March 9th and as you can see the SPC did label this area in a slight risk which was driven by the 5% tornado risk and the 15% wind risk. There was also a 5% hail risk. I was out chasing this day in North Carolina, but no storms could really like sustain intensity. This is 120 mile per hour damage from that Georgia tornado, and as you can see this was a manufactured home, so if you do have a home that doesn't have a real foundation and is just held up by cinder blocks, your house is gone in an EF2 tornado. When on the other hand, if you have a house that's actually bolted to the ground and is a well built house, then it probably will fly away in an EF4. So a big difference there. EF2s are pretty common, EF4s are very rare. From Mitch West, uh, he was chasing that day in Georgia, and he did not get the tornado, but this was the mesocyclone, or lowering, that held this tornado. This was after the tornado produced that F2. But on to our next area, and it's actually an outbreak in the only outbreak of March. So this outbreak had some intense tornadoes with it. It actually had two F3s. But first, we gotta start with the first day of the outbreak, so do not mind anything over here in Illinois to Ohio, just mind this stuff over here in Kansas. So this was a March 13th, 2024. We had two tornadoes near Topeka, Kansas, they were just west of it, and just south of Manhattan. This day was an enhanced day, and one of the first hail-driven enhanced days of the year. So we had a 5% tornado risk, a 15% wind risk, and a 30% hatched hail risk over here for portions of Missouri and Kansas. And because of this enhanced risk, there were a lot of chasers. So this tornado right over here that impacted Alta Vista, this one right here had a lot of chasers on it. So it, was, it only tracked for 10 miles, which is pretty long. It was a 400 yard tornado and it was 115 mile per hour, which barely made it an EF2. But we have a lot of video to show you of this. So this is coming in from Edgar O'Neill. So this is his view of the tornado. As you can see, it is a nice tornado, especially, let's wait for a lightning flash right there. Whenever the lightning goes, you can see it's a nice cone tornado. Over here from Tyler Metcalf, he has a nice time lapse of this supercell. As you can see, it was a mothership supercell. These ones look the best to me, as you can see. Uh, I'm gonna play a little bit of this. As you can see, it's rotating. There, it is producing a tornado, but it didn't really produce that strong tornado until a uh, nighttime hour. So right around like this time, right around here is producing that strong tornado, I believe. And then I couldn't pull back up the radar scan. So here is a Twitter image of the radar scan. As you can see, it had a cinnamon bun swirl look to it. So that was pretty rare. It was very close. So you could see some nice radar features with this. It also had a strong TVS. There wasn't much damage from this because it went through a really hilly area. Uh, but here was some farmer outhouse. Uh, looks like, I don't even know, is that sandbags or something for erosion? Looks like a really weird area, and this uh, photo is really far away. But there you go, there's your EF1 damage. Next day of the outbreak was a lot more significant. It was March 14th, 2024. So don't mind any of this stuff over here in Kansas. We are just looking at this stuff from Arkansas all the way up to Ohio. So our main risk was over here in Arkansas, and it kind of did verify we had an EF2 over there near Little Rock. So as you can see, there's an enhanced risk for Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and uh, some portions of Texas. This was driven by a 10% hatch risk of tornadoes. Uh, up here, where we had the EF3s, there was only a 5% and a 2% risk of tornadoes which means that you should take any risk of tornadoes seriously. There is a 15% uh, risk of damaging winds and a 30% hatched risk of damaging hail. So we're going to be focusing on Indiana and Ohio. So here are some videos. This one is from Zach Baden. As you can see, it was a nocturnal tornado. But if we continue to play this through, 
every now and then you get a lightning flash and you can see the tornado there it is again there it is causing power flashes right there and then from Severe WX Ohio, this is the video. There is the tornado right there. This is a much better video. You can see the tornado about the entire video. And then uh, there he is driving with it. Uh, but then the tornado did get rain wrapped and hard to see because it is nighttime. Uh, so these tornadoes had some of the worst damage of the year still. I mean, even those tornadoes that we just had in Omaha, uh, the damage does not is not as severe as these ones were. So, mainly focusing in this Winchester, Indiana tornado, this one caused some significant damage. So, this Winchester tornado, 700 yards wide, it tracked for 17 miles and a little bit longer than 17 miles, actually, because uh, this was done by two different uh, National Weather Services. So, 17 miles plus whatever this one is, let's see. 17 miles plus 24 miles, so uh, I believe that's like 41 miles. So that is a very long track tornado. It only caused EF3 damage in um, Indiana, not in Ohio. Uh, and it was mainly focused in the town of Winchester. And the tornado here is uh, pretty crazy. So this was a Taco Bell. So this was 165 mile per hour damage. They actually got professional people to inspect like the bolts and stuff. Uh, because this looks like EF4 damage. This should be EF4 damage. But the uh, bolts that were holding in this uh, building were rusty because this was actually one of those old Taco Bells. Uh, so if you know the difference between the old look Taco Bells and the new ones. This one was an old one, so an old building, which means that the bolts were very rusty. So this was uh, top of the line EF3 damage, 165 mile per hour. Um, luckily, no one was uh, injured or killed inside of this Taco Bell, uh, which is very, very lucky. Also, there's a lot of shopping carts. I wonder where these are from. They all just got blown into the Taco Bell. And then over here is a church that is uh, in very close proximity to that Taco Bell. Uh, this was 155 mile per hour damage. Uh, as you can see, the church just got leveled. And uh, it looks like there was one, one little wall that held up. And uh, as you can see, still stuff in the cabinets. Clearly, cabinets are uh, very good protectors of the pots and pans. Uh, later down the line, a little bit farther east of Winchester, uh, this was a normal house, a uh, normal house and all the walls, uh, except for I guess one interior room, they all collapsed, uh, and this was 145 mile per hour damage, uh, look at how the gutter just got warped around the house. And then our other tornado that we're going to look at was over here in Ohio, so this one touched down multiple times but also lifted multiple times. So we're going to focus on this EF3 one that was near the Indian Lake State Park. Uh, so this one right over here was 155 miles or 155 mile per hour winds, which made it an EF3. It was uh, 31 miles and longer if you do. It was around 100 miles if you count all of these. Uh, all of these are separate tornadoes since it lifted and then went back up. But if you do count all these separate tornadoes, it's around 100 miles that it tracked. And then also this one right here was a um, a thousand yards wide at a point. That is ten football fields wide. And the main thing whenever I was tracking this on radar that everyone in WX Twitter was talking about was that it went right through a trailer park, and you could definitely see that on the CC drop. And uh, here are some aerial uh, photos of the trailer park. As you can see, every single trailer is just it's just uh, some dirt and mud now. All the trailers are gone. As you can see, there's another view. So this trailer park was, uh, there is an official wind speed for this. Um, not sure why. I guess there wasn't a damage indicator. Uh, but it was EF3 damage. Uh, these are more well-built houses right over here. As you can see, that one right there. And then this one that got blown apart. So these are more well-built houses and they still got destroyed. Showing this was definitely an EF3. Um, and then here was a normal, just a resident house. And all walls collapsed on this, which made it 150 mile per hour damage. And it was an EF3. Uh, it looks like a pretty weak foundation because it looks like it just got lifted from the rest of the house. Kind of looks like a, right over here, looks like a swimming pool with no water in it. Uh, but then you see the actual like flooring of the house right here. So that is pretty crazy. And then after the that outbreak right over there, nothing really happened. This is the rest of March, March 16th through March 31st. As you can see, not much happened. Uh, we did have a little uh, 
tornado instances over here in Kansas uh, and the Oklahoma Panhandle and the Texas Panhandle. Uh, so we will go over that real quick. So this is uh, March 24. There was an enhanced risk that was driven by hail. As you can see, there's a 30% hail risk, uh, but also a 5% um, tornado graphic. This didn't cause uh, much tornadoes or damage. It was mainly just land spouts, but with the tornadoes that we did have, this one did impact the small town of Perry, Perryton, uh, Texas, near the Texas-Oklahoma border, both of their panhandles. Uh, and it did impact uh, this uh, regional hospital over here. As you can see, the shingles got ripped off of this right over here. Looks like some type of entrance building to the hospital. Uh, and this was just EF0 damage, 85 mile per hour. Uh, but those are all the tornadoes in March 2024. So I hope you guys did enjoy. And I will be doing a video in for all the tornadoes in April. That one's going to take me a long while. Because the end of April has been very, very active lately. And May's just going to get even more active. So get ready, y'all.